Hey, it's Coach M. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Marika Kittleson, a certified life coach and master NLP trainer with over a decade of experience helping parents and teens navigate the teenage years. I believe in using actionable tools and strategies that get real results. So whether you're a parent wanting a better relationship with your teenager or a teen who wants to be more confident, discover who you really are and take your life to the next level, I've got the best tools and strategies to help you get there. And today I've got six things you'll want to make sure that you're saying to your teenager to increase their emotional intelligence and their self-confidence. haven't already done so, if you could please hit that subscribe button for me. I'm on a mission to get these powerful tools on this channel into as many parents' hands as possible. Thank you. Okay, so first, let me give you just a simple definition of EQ, or emotional quotient, which is also referred to as emotional intelligence. And let me tell you why it consists of the most important skills that your teenager can ever learn. Emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize, understand, and manage our own emotions and understand how others might feel and why and manage our emotional reactions plus choose different thoughts that lead to different emotions. The bottom line, when people, especially teenagers, learn how to be more emotionally intelligent, they learn how to make better decisions. Most of our decisions are based on our emotions, how we feel at a given point in time. And because of how the brain is developing in adolescent years, teens can be more emotional and impulsive, causing them to make more poor choices because of their emotional state. So when we can give our teens the tools to become fully aware of what they're feeling and why, as well as understanding what others may be feeling, we give them the keys to have better relationships, more resilience, more confidence, improved social skills, and less impulsivity. I can't stress enough the importance of emotional intelligence over IQ. All the accolades and achievements in the world will mean nothing if a person's mental and emotional health is suffering. So here are the six things that you can say to your teenager to help increase their emotional intelligence and their self-confidence. Number one, how are you feeling? Or how did that make you feel? We tend to ask teenagers how they're doing, but I recommend replacing how are you doing with how are you feeling? And it helps if you're specific in referring to something that they've experienced or something they might feel anxious or fearful about. But you can also use this question when referring to something they might feel excited or happy about. The idea behind asking how are you feeling is to get your teenager to start thinking about how they're feeling by accessing their emotional state and going with them. It also helps if we as parents get good at talking about how we're feeling about different things that are going on in our lives. So saying something like, wow, I felt so frustrated today when I had to work through my lunch, or I'm so excited about my interview tomorrow, but I'm really nervous too. Modeling what you're feeling for your teenager lets them know that it's okay for them to express how they feel about something too. A small caveat here. Obviously, you don't want to turn the expression of feelings into a complaining fest. And you want to be mindful not to shut down your teenager's feelings, no matter how they feel, even if they're talking about you and how you make them feel. If this happens, simply say, I can see how you could feel that way. Or I'm really sorry you felt that way. That wasn't my intention. Try to keep your tone flat and neutral. Once your teenager is done telling you how they feel, you'll want to use reflections with them. If you want more in-depth information on how to use reflections the right way, check out the video here and it's linked in the description as well. Number two, I can tell you're feeling, insert the emotion, what do you need from me right now? It could be, I can tell you're feeling frustrated. What do you need from me right now? Or I can tell you're feeling really stressed. What do you need from me right now? This is a great one to use when you can visibly see that your teenager is struggling with a certain emotion. It could be disappointment, anger, sadness, confusion, whatever it is. If you can address the emotion and then ask, what do you need from me right now? It diffuses the tension in the situation and it gives your teenager a chance to recognize the emotion they're feeling because you've just told them the emotion they're demonstrating. And it gives them a chance to also focus their mind on what they actually need in the situation. Start practicing this one and you'll quickly see how your teen is able to calm themselves down and tell you what's really going on. Number three, I can see this problem is really upsetting you. What do you think is the next step that you want to take to solve it? This one is great for helping your teen access and build on their problem solving skills while being fully aware of the feelings the problem is creating. Again, 
the more that we can help our teenager identify the emotions they're feeling, the quicker they can start to process through them. If emotions are really heightened, you'll wanna to wait to ask this question. Wait until the emotions are not so intense. Part of helping our teenager process through their emotions is by holding space for them, which means sitting in their sadness with them, their fear, their anxiety, and not trying to fix it. We wanna validate their feelings and be in the space with them until the feelings move through them and are not so intense. Then we can start helping them problem solve by asking them the question, what do you think is the next step that you wanna take? Number four, what do you think they might be struggling with that made them act that way? If your teenager comes to you and tells you how upset they are because of something a friend did to them, this question is a great one to ask, but only after you validated your teen's feelings. If your teen is hurt and sad about what happened, you'll want to acknowledge the hurt and sad feelings first. Then say, I'm surprised your friend acted that way. It doesn't seem like it's something they would normally do. What do you think they might be struggling with that made them act that way? This gives your teen a chance to put themselves in their friend's shoes for just a moment and possibly see the situation from a different point of view. This is such an important part of building emotional intelligence. If we start to see situations from a more multi-perspective approach, we begin to gain more understanding about others, about their emotions, their actions, and it helps us to regulate and manage our own emotions more easily. This question helps our teen start thinking about others in a new way. It allows them to stop focusing solely on themselves and instead shift their focus to the other person and the feelings the other person might be experiencing, which breeds compassion, empathy, and understanding in our teenager. Number five, I trust you, or I trust that you'll make the best decision. This one is great for increasing your teen's self-confidence and problem solving. I get a lot of pushback from parents on this one because they tell me that they don't trust their teenager and they don't trust that the decision their teenager makes will be the best one. I have to remind parents that our job as parents isn't to make our child always make the best decision. Our job is to give them the tools so they believe that they can make the best choice for themselves. Let's face it, there have been probably plenty of decisions that your teen has made that you knew were not the best decisions and there will be plenty more in their lifetime. What's important is to allow the natural consequences to happen and to be there for emotional support. When you start trusting your teenager and letting them know you trust them, they will feel respected by you and more often than not, they won't wanna let you down. Plus, you build more of their self-confidence. They start to see that they can make great decisions on their own. And if they happen to make a poor choice, which we all do from time to time, it's not the end of the world and they have you in their corner. Number six, thank you. We often forget how powerful these two words are. When we thank our teenager for being thoughtful, kind, generous, helpful, we remind them how important those traits are and how much those traits are a part of who they are. In other words, we help our teenagers see themselves fully. And not only that, we model the importance of thanking others and showing gratitude. Emotional intelligence not only is about managing our emotions, but also understanding what others are feeling and being able to manage our emotional reactions based on what others are feeling. Gratitude models what we're feeling towards our teenager in that moment, which fosters feelings of appreciation, respect, and love within our teenager. The more we do it with them, the more they'll do it with other people. So next time you see your teenager, just say, thank you for being such an incredible daughter or son. I'm truly blessed to be your parent and see how your teenager reacts. Start saying these six things to your teenager on a consistent basis and watch how their emotional intelligence and self-confidence begins to grow. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you wanna see more videos like it where I give you the tools to help you navigate the teen years, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and click on the bell icon to get notified when I upload a new video. And I upload videos every week. Hope your day is amazing and I'll see you in the next video.